another package of news stories from the power sector. You're on to Power Wheel, a production of the Transmission Company of Nigeria, TCN. I am Chiwenwa Anyao. Here are top stories from the power sector coming up shortly in our power news segment. In line with the incremental electricity roadmap of the federal government, the Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Mr. Babatunde Fashola, has charged the distribution companies, DISCOs, to improve their customer care and promptly respond to clearing faults in their networks. Fashola, who spoke at the 27th monthly power sector meeting held in Yola, Adama State, tasked the DISCOs and the transmission company of Nigeria, TCN, to brace up for the rainy season that could add more water for higher performance at the hydro plant plants, but brings challenges for transmission and distribution firms. It's a different weather type. It brings different challenges. And it is for us to anticipate, prepare, so that we can respond. Uh, as we all know, the rains have started showing signs of readiness. In some places, there have been very heavy storms uh, in the last few days. The rains will bring more water supply to the hydroelectricity facilities, and they will also bring more challenges to the transmission and distribution services by way of storms, by way of heavy winds. They will challenge us by way of falling trees, they will challenge us by way of damage to the towers and to the lines and to the installations. Uh, I urge us to be prepared to rise up to these challenges better than we have done in the past. Highlighting what the operators should do during the season, the minister said they should inform their customers promptly of faults, dispatch maintenance team to assess and fix faults, and that customers should flag such faults to the operators. Customers like to know what is going on. So the first thing is that I am a customer myself. The first thing I want to know if I don't have power is why. So discos, transmission companies, once we have these storms, they cause disruptions to power, we must issue notices that this has happened. That is the first thing that the customer says, okay, somebody knows what is going on. Then we must then send our maintenance team out to go and assess and to go and replace damaged equipment. We must then send information to the public on multiple media platforms, whether it's the conventional and social media, that they should also help us by reporting faults that we may not be aware of. Because oftentimes some of these things we don't know, they also don't know. Let, let us create that interface. We have the customer helpline now, let us use it more, so that customers also can report where they need service. Fashola, who reiterated government's commitment towards the distribution expansion plan, said his ministry has begun shopping for original equipment manufacturers, OEM, in its bid to construct distribution networks to support the evacuation of 2,000 megawatts of electricity currently stranded in the grid. On the federal government intervention for distribution expansion, which we have resolved at the Federal Executive Council to do in order to support the uh, infrastructure of the discos and help deliver the 2,000 megawatts that is constrained by distribution. I can report now that advertisements asking for quotations from original equipment manufacturers have been published and uh, we are now awaiting responses from those equipment manufacturers. He also allayed the fares of the discos on the eligible customers' regulation, charging them to redefine relationships with their customers to woo them. He commended Yola Electricity Distribution Company for leading the way as it makes arrangements with a larger customer, Adama Beverage, to execute the policy. For those discos who still doubt the possibilities of eligible customer policy, Yola Disco and Adama Beverage now show you that it is not about anybody trying to take your big customers. It is about you having a redefined relationship with your big customers. 
So I hope this is an example that others would emulate. The minister was happy that although the private investor gave up on Yola Disco after it was privatized in 2013 by declaring force major, later government took it up and has proven the business was viable. Even though the investor gave it up, this administration did not give up on Yola. And what we did was to appoint Engineer Mustafa to manage Yola Disco. I think I re-echo him if I say that month after month, from the reports we have received at our various meetings in terms of performance, in terms of revenue collection, in terms of service delivery, all of us know that Yola Disco has held its own against the odds and in some cases has even surpassed the expectations of it. So what we have proven is that Yola Disco is not unviable. The managing director of YEDC, Mustafa Baba Umara, said the disco has improved its revenue collection by over 200 percent since it took over from the private investor and that it is the first disco to actualize eligible customer regulation with Adama Beverage, which is one of its large customers. On our revenue generation, everybody knows what warranted for the first major because the revenue stream, according to the former core investor, is very poor in Yola. Fortunately for us, we have improved our revenue collection by almost 200 percent. Now on the issue of eligibility customer, Yola Electricity Distribution Company is the first discourse to buy into that idea. With that, with that one, one of our core customer whom we just commissioned his uh, Title 3K dedicated line is trying to key into the dedication, a dedicate, um, eligible customer scenario and we are ready to sign the PPA with the JOMCO and our service agreement with TCM very soon, sir. Umar added that the firm has keyed into the meter assets provider regulation by collaborating with investors to accelerate meter installation for its customers. We have already completed 80% of our Touch 3 KB line, which are being destroyed by the insurgent in the northeast with the intervention of the Federal Ministry of Power, Works and Housing under your assistance. This includes the rehabilitation of Dombua to Madagali line, 33 KV line, among others, and Damasak to Maiduguri line, of which Niger Republic 2 is on that line. For the past three years, Niger and northern part of Borno were caught up, but of recent, we have connected Damasak and we have gotten in touch with Niger led to check their own line so that we can connect them, sir. The transmission company of Nigeria, TCN, has commissioned a 60 MVA transmission transformer in Bauchi along with 17 others using its engineers within the last 11 months. The managing director, Usman Guru Mohammed, has said. Mohammed, who spoke at the commissioning in Bochi town, said using in-house engineers, TCN has installed over 18 transmission transformers that include the 60 MVA transformer that was commissioned in Bochi state. Now, before we came in, TCN engineers don't install transformers. Now, TCN engineers, from June to date, TCN engineers have installed 18 transformers all over the country, including the one that they are going to commission. The managing director said with the new Bochi transformer in operation, power supply would improve in all localities in Bochi, including Ningi, Naborodo, and Das communities. He added that the project has increased the wheeling capacity of the substation from 70 MVA to 130 MVA, just as it urged just electricity distribution company to expand their network so that they can improve their energy supply from the TCN facility. And all the localities that are around here, including Bokoro, 
Das and all the other places that are around this place. And also, we expect that uh, Just Disco will redeem their, their network to ensure that they pick the lot. The TCN head mentioned that within just three days, the company commissioned a 40 MVA transmission substation in Mayo Belwa, Adama, and a 30 MVA transformer in the Kombe substation to further stabilize the electricity grid in the northeast region. We are working very hard to see how we stabilize the grid and uh, we are happy to also tell the audience here that when we came in, the capacity of transmission was, was uh, 5,500. As of December, when we last simulated, the capacity of TCN was 7,124. While thanking the Bauchi State Governor, Mohamed Abdullahi, for the various collaborations with TCN on projects implementation, he revealed that the company was working on a second stage of the Transmission Rehabilitation and Expansion Program, TREP, under which it will build a transmission line from Calabar to Kano to boost its wheeling capacity to the north. We are also working very hard to expand the network to create Transmission Rehabilitation and Expansion Program, Stage 2. And that stage two, we are working on building a transmission line that will move from Calabar to up to Kano. Governor Abdullahi, in his remarks, expressed his happiness with the project, which he believes will help to improve power supply in Bochi State. I'm indeed very, very happy to be the one to perform the commissioning of this 1x60 MPA transformer in Bochi State. To so many people, the meaning of this may be lost to them. But to me and to the entire good people of Bauchi State, this is a very great development. Abdullahi said he has been collaborating with Muhammad before his appointment at TCN and that the present collaboration was bearing fruit. He assured the company of more support in expanding the collaboration. Let me assure the transmission company of uh, Nigeria that the Bauchi State government is ready and willing to expand the scope of collaboration between us. Yesterday night, we discussed the advent of a memorandum of understanding which will now expand the parameters of this collaboration. And I indicated to the MDC my readiness at any time to append my signature to this MOU because I know this MOU will be a precursor to the industrial development of my state. In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful, I hereby commission this 1x60 MVA transformer for the use of the good people of Bochi State. This will lie here at This is to commemorate the commissioning of 1x60 MPA, MPA 132 stroke 33 KV transformer at 132 stroke 33 KV transmission station Bochi, Bochi State by His Excellency Bauchi State Governor M. A. Abubakar Esquire on Tuesday 15th May 2018. Let's take a break for a short message. We'll be right back. In the Transmission Company of Nigeria, TCN, we transmit bulk electricity from power generating companies, GENCOs, to distribution load centers of various distribution companies, discos, nationwide. We do not generate electricity, neither do we distribute same directly to electricity consumers. TCN has two business units, the Transmission Service Provider, TSP, and Independent System Operations, ISO. The ISO comprised of System Operation, SO, and Market Operation, MO. The business units all perform specialized functions under the TCN umbrella. Transmission Company of Nigeria, TCN, will in power for national economic growth. This message is brought to you by the Transmission Company of Nigeria, TCN.
Welcome back from the break. The Power News segment continues shortly. The Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, NERC, has said the mini-grid regulation it rolled out in 2017 was meant to cut down the cost for supplying electricity in rural areas and to accelerate rural electrification projects. The Assistant General Manager, Renewable Energy and Rural Electrification at NERC, Dr. Abdullahi Yusuf, said this at the May Next in Power Dialogue in Abuja. He said rather than the complex process involved in licensing power generation companies, Jenkos, NERC scaled down the investment requirements to reduce the tariff mini grid operators may place on electricity for rural areas. What they decided to do is to uh, come up with, by providing light handed regulation that makes it easy for the investors in those areas to reduce their burden, regulatory burden they have to take in terms of reportage itself of what they have to do, licensing requirements, entry, entries and entry and exit requirements were scaled down and lowered down under this uh, light handed regulatory framework. Now, therefore, we had in 2017, a mini-grid regulation was approved uh, by NERC. Shortly after the mini-grid regulation was introduced, the Rural Electrification Agency, REA, in 2017, hosted the mini-grid conference in Abuja, where over 600 investors and stakeholders attended. It announced the Rural Electrification Fund, about 311 billion naira, in grant for projects of private investors to ensure 60% of Nigerians are connected to electricity by the year 2020. Yusuf, who explained the entry process, said operators who seek to set up 100 kilowatts mini-grid in rural areas only need permit, which takes less time than that of licenses from NERC, and few documents to be approved, while those doing smaller capacities do not need a permit, but just approval and other requirements are waived so they can deliver power faster and cheaper. All these are waived, we have tried to light handed, make it light handed so that it will help to reduce the cost of supply because every cost you put on the investor uh, to pay will rather go to the tariff that will be collected from the customer. So while you are having to make it easy for the investor, they are also using out the tariff for the, for the customers in the rural area and developing rural economics. The Chief Operating Officer of Colonel Electricity Distribution Company, KEDC, Rahul Singh, said his firm has keyed into the regulation by seeking investors for mini-grid projects. He said in India, where he comes from, mini-grids such as solar, hydro and wind power supply in rural areas are funded by some grants. On the topic of discussion today on the mini-grids, we welcome any mini-grid uh, developer who comes uh, along to us and uh, would like to take over a certain area where we have not reached or where we don't reach adequately also. We have no uh, compunction about giving them the necessary permits uh, as long as uh, they deliver. Uh, so far, uh, in the last uh, more than three years that I've been in Kano, uh, we have not been approached by a single entity yet. And we'd like people like GBE to come along to Kano because there are uh, numerous opportunities there to serve people. The Chief Executive Officer of Green Village Electricity Projects, Ifanyi Orajaka, a mini-grid developer, shared his experience on the demand for mini-grid in rural areas. He said with support from the Bank of Industry, his firm has conducted environmental and social impact assessment for over 300 off-grid communities across four regions and has invested about five million dollars private capital so far. When we envisaged the mini grid technology in, back in 2007, uh, for us we always knew that it was going to be a collaboration between mini grid operators and the distribution companies. Why? Because in Nigeria we have a very peculiar uh, and very unique. Uh, uh, issue in, in our hands. Even if we solve all the complexities currently uh, facing the grid, 55% of Nigerians, like me and you, would not have access to uh, electricity. If it doesn't bother you, it deeply bothers me and it motivates me to actually do uh, what we do in, in, in GBE and 
to, to brush hairs that point, we're looking at, with the current uh, population of 419 million people, we're looking at slightly uh, about 100 million people. So, to be able to solve such problem at that scale, our hands need to actually be in there. And for us, we say it's more like a collaboration, a collaborative effort to actually get all the parties to help in solve this uh, national issue. The federal government has reiterated its commitment to leading the part on the new meter assets providers regulation by providing meters to the distribution companies with an available 37 billion Naira metering fund. The Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Mr. Babatunde Fashola, who disclosed this in Yola shortly after the 27th monthly power sector meeting, said government has engaged a meter assessed provider who is going around the discos to collate data for the implementation. I'm aware that Yola Disco has already submitted their own data to that meter asset provider. So sooner rather than later, you will begin to see uh, meters in supply because we have about 30 something billion in an account waiting for these processes. But policies require some time to impact and then to take root and then to have effect. Fashola, who spoke about the achievements in restoring power lines destroyed by insurgency in the northeast, said government through the Yola Electricity Distribution Company has expanded transformer capacities and has reconnected about 80% of the damaged lines. A lot of work has been done in between TCN, NDPHC and Yola Disco who operates within that franchise and uh, essentially about 80% of the damaged assets have been uh, replaced, repaired or resuscitated and we are now in the final phase of even expanding what was the installed capacity there. He also said that with the power projects, significant changes have been recorded in the region as agro-dealers have related their experiences of using more public power under Yola Disco. They also reported that they are consuming less diesel as Fashola said the impact of that will be in the drop of inflation rate shortly. We see change in agro-industrialists who are now using more public power from Yola Disco and who are reporting that they are consuming less diesel and we will see the impact of that in the inflation uh, numbers coming up in the next few months because also in Kebi they say that they are getting more power so that will ultimately impact agriculture and from what I am hearing uh, ahead of the report food inflation is going to be a big component of the reduction in total inflation food that is also change and that's progress. The managing director of the transmission company of Nigeria, TCN, Mr. Usman Kur Mohammed, on the sidelines of the meeting, briefed newsmen of plans to upgrade more transmission substations in the northeast, including that of Yola, where the meeting held. This meeting is very fruitful because we have also been able to inspect our facility here in, uh, in Yola and also look at the places where we are going to add additional capacity in Yola. As part of the World Bank uh, project which we are implementing, that is NetApp, we are installing one by 150 MVA here in Yola and we are installing another uh, one by a uh, 2 by 100 MVA here in Yola in this current substation. So we inspected to see the locations where we are putting the substation to see whether we have the space and we have the space. Mohammed said TCN was contributing to reducing the poverty level in the northeast by raising the capacity of energy in the region to guarantee more power supply and boost business enterprises. But it's important for us to also bring electricity at a higher voltage to all those areas. And it's part of also the, uh, the, the, the building of our confidence and also bringing poverty, I mean reducing poverty in those areas for us to bring supply to, to those areas. The TCN head said there are plans to increase the energy wheeling capacity of TCN from the over 7,000 megawatts recorded in December 2017 to about 9,000 megawatts by the end of this year. We are planning to ensure that we, really, we increase the capacity of TCN to, to the end of this year, maybe to 9,000, and uh, hopefully we are looking at uh, increasing the capacity in the next three to four years to 20,000 megawatts. Don't forget that in the energy, I mean, energy pyramid, when the generation capacity is, uh, 
is uh, 7,000. The capacity of transmission is supposed to be twice, which means transmission is supposed to be, uh, is supposed to be 14,000 because we are supposed to have redundancy uh, in place. Stay put as we bring you more news in the Power Flash segment. with us next week for another exciting edition until then please keep watching power wheel on our youtube channel and we hope you reach us through the platforms showing on your screen i am chuenwa anyao bye for now <laughs>